Bye. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look. Well, I guess you've been warned. So look, look, here I come with three. <laughs> look, look, two, look, 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 one. Bye. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. <laughs> it's the Dagon, greatest in the Dagon multiverse. Oh, yeah. So we have a great one for you today. You're welcome. All right, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's be serious now. So we do have a great one, though. So you know how Saturdays go. That's a little more loose, a little more loose. But today we're not getting loose. Today we're, we're, we're right in here hardcore. Uh, it, it's, today is onboarding day. Today is straight onboarding. So we have four of them. Four onboardings today. Oh, yeah. And some of you fucksticks are going to love this shit. All right. Check this shit out. A Swiss town is using a crypto uh, to fight COVID. You know which one? Tezos. Buying Tezos hodlers to be used by a Swiss town uh, for COVID uh, stuff. So we're going to read about that. And then Band Protocol. This is the, the, the story I told you I was going to read you today. Band Protocol onboards Coin98 wallet. So Coin98's got a wallet and they're going to integrate Band in it. We're going to check that out. And then two IOTA onboardings. Um... First one is Project Paggy, Pagey, I don't know how you say it, Pagey, to use the tangle for electrical, water, and gas sales. And then number two for, for IOTA, IOTA Society 2 launches secrets that are can compete with Facebook. So we'll check out what that means. And then shout out to the daily summary. So we got four stories. Let's get to them. Bah! Yeah. Look, look, let's get to them. Let's see what we do around these parts. Where's our money? Where's our money? Bong, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Let's check out these cash homies. All right, what we got? Bitcoin, $13,744. When I left yesterday, Bitcoin was at $13,617. So we've gone up. Uh, what is that? $130. It was about $130. Bucks. Something like that. Around there. Around there. Look, look. We're rounding. Around there, brothers and sisters. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's see. Top 10 of the day, brothers. Look, look. Usual suspects. Top 10. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Chainlink, Binance Coin, Litecoin, Polkadot, and Bitcoin SV. Let's look at the market moves of the day. You know what it be. We're looking at this line right here. 24 hour. So, oop, single digits up to single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Yo, look at that V chain. Ten grand will get you a node. Single does up to get singles down. I know it's not like back like last year when I used to say three grand will get you an ode. Single does up, single does down. Two single does up, single does down. All right. Let's see who lost money today. See anything on here you like? Go get it because it is on sale. Let's see what we're working with. Bye. Yeah, not much sales. All right, top ten losers. Ocean Protocol, Ave, Uniswap, ABBC Coin, Numeraire, Elrond, Yearn Finance, Hedge Trade, uh, Synthetics Network, and Algorand. Let's see who made money today, folks. Uh, a little skimpy gains. Top 10 gainers Ampleforth, Loopring, Nexo, Filecoin, Ren, Quant, Orchid, Huobi Token, Tezos, and Blockstack. All right. Let's see what total mark cap of the day is. Whoop, bang, we passed over 400. All right. 
All right. All right. Top. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, total market cap is four hundred one point one billion dollars. When I left yesterday, we we're at three ninety seven point two billion dollars. So we've gone up. Let's just call that four billion dollars. All right. And twenty four hour volume is. Gone down in volume today. Eighty-one point three billion dollars in twenty-four hour volume, and when I left yesterday, we we're actually at ninety-two point one. So uh, we've gone down. Uh, what is that? Eleven billion dollars. All right, down eleven billion. Bang! All right, let's get to the stories. Look, look. All right, let's get to those dang old stories. All right, so we got here, Sleepy Swiss Town launches, bang, Tezos Black Coronavirus Aid Program. So, this is pretty interesting. Uh, the town of, and then let's read the byline. The town of Wetsikon will be using blockchain tech for targeted local business aid. All right. That seems cool. Tezos Hotelers. And remember this, you know. I mean, it's a government contract, you know. If your blockchain works for them doing this, you know, maybe they go like, hey, what else can your blockchain do for us? Yeah. You know what I mean? Got to get your foot in the door. Once you're in there, yeah. Uh -huh. Things might open up. All right, for Tesla's hodlers. So. On Friday, the Swiss town of Wetzikon, formerly best known for its Idyllic Pastors and Churches launched a blockchain-based program to support small and medium-sized local businesses affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Valued at 250,000 Swiss francs, about 280 bucks, the initial aid disbursement will be funded with a municipal credit line earmarked for the coronavirus and will be distributed to the roughly 25,000 inhabitants of Wetzikon in the form of an e-coupon worth 10 Swiss francs. Also, every person gets 10 Swiss francs. That's not very much. <laughs> All right. You know, like, what the fuck? That's like a Starbucks coffee. So, anyways, residents can access... You know, that's not even enough for a Big Mac fries and a Coke around these parts. Anyways, residents can access the disbursement through a smartphone app, EQ, uh, which will be using the aid program as a pilot trial for its platform. According to their website, EQ is designed to help entities such as governments... Oh, now you're hearing the halt. Hear that? Yeah, now you're hearing the... I mean, it's only early still. It's only 9 o'clock at night, 9.30 at night. Yeah, we have a big party here in South Beach. Oh, hey, dude. Fuck, it's crazy here. They open up the streets so everyone can just walk around. And uh, all, the, all the restaurants, they put seating outside and just serve drinks right on the side of the street to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The revelry is hardcore around these parts. All right, but look, let's get to our money around these parts. That's the fuck I care about. So look, according to the website Iku, what's going on with my cigarette? Iku is designed to help entities such as governments and event organizers distribute earmarked funds in the form of coins and points and was built on the Tezos blockchain through a collaboration between the Swiss firms, Swiss firms, Papers AG, and multiple subsidiaries of Farner Consulting AG. Bye. So there you go. Built on Tezos with the help of uh, Swiss firms, Papers AG, and Farner Consulting. Nice. So, on the app, residents will be able to convert their coupons into Wetsy coins <laughs> that they can later use to make purchases at local companies. Local business owners can then convert the currency back into Swiss francs from the town administration, also via the app. So Rudy Rufenak, mayor of Witzenkan, said the program, under the current circumstances, it is imperative for us to act in favor of the local economy in a, in a sustainable manner. With Iku, we have found a viable solution to motivate the people of Witzenkan to shop in local stores instead of just buying online or from wholesalers outside of our town. So, bang! So, look. You know, that's the same thing that China did. You know, do you know that China with their coronavirus? So here in America, 
we had, I mean, we all have and we still have this thing, coronavirus. Duh. All right. Let's get serious. Well, here in America, what they did was they just gave worker bees 12, 1200 bucks, and then extra money on this unemployment insurance that you get every, I guess, two weeks or however often they get it. But they gave them extra money in that. And and now that's cut off. So actually, a lot of Americans are fucking getting evicted and hurting and losing their homes and all this kind of crap. But, and so that's, you know, what China did was very different. And that's what these guys are doing. You know, what China did was they gave their people money, but you couldn't spend it just on anything. Like, they gave their people money, but if you wanted to buy, like, uh, I don't know, like, if you wanted to go out for dinner, yeah, yeah, you couldn't spend it on that. Their money that they gave their citizens were only spendable in certain places, like for uh, pharmacies and um, grocery stores and, you know, uh, whatever, stuff like that, like what they thought was vital. It's not like here in America, right? They just gave you a check. Here's $1,200, homeboy. Spend it how you want. Yeah, and so it sounds like that's what these guys, and so that's how China kept their economy um, roaring while they were under the intense, you know, uh, coronavirus thing back then because while their people could only spend the money at retailers that the Chinese government chose, uh, and so, you know, it kept the economy going because, all right, well, I can only buy at grocery stores, all right, I'll buy an extra chicken or you know, an extra steak or whatever, right? And whereas Americans, <laughs> you know, what they did was take that money and go on vacation with it. Oh, yeah, you should have seen the people here in South Beach. South Beach was closed, but people took their stimulus checks and all came here. Yeah, people you knew and you had no business being here. The only reason they were here because they got that extra money. Uh, and so um, that's what it looks like these guys are doing. So I, ma- I sort of made fun of them for only giving them how much? It was some pathetic amount. Anyways, they're going to split 280. What? I to turn on the initial aid or best over fun of it. Anyways, it's going to be a pathetic amount, but when you do it the way that they're doing it, it has to get spent at local stores, local businesses, hair salons, whatever, whatever, you know, local local mom and shop pop businesses, right? You can't um you know, like go buy shit on Amazon with it. Nah. All right, so you get it? So it keeps the money. They're giving you money, but it keeps the money in the community all right you get it they're not allowed to just go spend it on whatever you know okay okay so i think you get it and that's how china did it and that's how china their economy never crashed right like you saw us we went risk off boom i showed you the charts when i was trading right yeah china didn't do that china was infected all out of shit Right, they were infected. All sorts of people infected and dying in the streets and everything. <laughs> yeah, but their economy kept going because they just kept giving their people money that they had to spend at local retailers. Okay, so that's what this sounds like. So under the current circumstances, it's imperative for us to act in favor of the local economy. See, and that's what he's saying: to act for the local economy in a sustainable manner. With Eco, we have found a viable solution to motivate the people of Witchcoin. Sorry, not Witzer coin. <laughs> Sorry. Witzicon. To shop in local stores instead of just buying online or from wholesalers outside of our town. See, they have to shop this thing they're giving them. If it's what I think it is, like the Chinese thing, yeah, you can only spend it in their town. Like if you try to go spend this in the next city over, the next town over, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. So they're keeping the money inside the town. So, Wetsicon is not the only government that has explored using blockchain technology. As a response to the coronavirus, Bank of Canada exec Timothy Lane has previously called on central governments to prepare for CBDCs in an effort to encourage cross-border digital payments. All right, whatever, man. Fuck the digital payments. But look! So, there you go. But here it is. This is a government contract. So, Tesla's hodlers. Bye! Now, it's only one town. Only one town. Let's not, you know... Let's not pat ourselves on the back too much. <laughs> Actually, I don't hold Tezos, but I know a bunch of you guys do. So don't pat yourself on the back too much yet. But like I said, use case. And if it's successful, bang. Well, you get to walk around and say, look what I did for the Swiss town of, what's this called? Wetsicon. Look what I did for Wetsicon. And, th- and never mind that. Maybe Wetsicon says, look, look, what else can you do for us? <laughs> look, look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. 
That's how shit rolls. You know, once a fucker is happy with your services, well, how else can you serve me, buddy? <laughs> right? That's how business is. Like, that's how it works. And so, uh, uh, great for Wetsicon. Great for Tesla's great for the multiverse. Let's move on. Bang! Yes. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, let's see what else we got. Bang! Oh, Band Protocol partners with Coin98 Wallet. Boom. And on the byline there, it says Coin98 Wallet is working with Band Protocol to make mass adoption of blockchain technology a reality. Well, well to try to make it a reality. <laughs> try to make it a reality. Oh, give it a shot. Go for it. <laughs> Try to get those soccer moms and dad to buy their coffee with crypto. <laughs> Give it a shot, though, buddy. I mean, if that's how it rolls, that's how it rolls. I just don't think it will, but maybe. Yeah, they'll all wake up one day and just magically come to the realization that they need to spend decentralized money. All right, so look, let's get realistic. <laughs> I'm being such a dick. I know, guys, because I hate that shit. I hate when just the, these unrealistic fantasies and people are basing their investments on that kind of shit. You know, like, that's the problem. I mean, you could dream of what you want. I mean, dreams are dreams. You should have big dreams. I mean, that's great. But also keep them you know, realistic. Well, here's a realistic dream right here. That bang, ban protocol has announced a partnership with Coin98 Wallet, a renowned decentralized wallet. Oh, it's renowned, is it? Never heard of it. <laughs> Having multi-chain native DApp support, oh, Coin98 Wallet has integrated the BAN protocol, decentralized price oracle, to offer security and transparency. Look, look! Bang! Providing secure pricing for various crypto assets. So, as you guys know, well, if you don't know, BAN does the same thing as Chainlink, so... Which is vital, which is vital. It's key. It's key. Uh, you know, they bring off chain data on the chain so that the D apps and the uh, smart contracts can actually do stuff based on what's happening in the real world at the time, in real time, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So that's how that works. And so uh, providing, uh, and I, I know I always say it, but I'm going to just say it again. And so what Ban Protocol does is, you've got a fucking blockchain. Oh, yeah, oh, it's shiny, it's new, it's you know, it's clean. Oh yeah, this many transactions, this much scalability, this much look, look and look, look. Yeah, well, if you can't get any data <laughs> onto that piece of shit, well, if you can't get any data onto your little fancy blockchain, well, it's just a piece of shit. It's like a laptop. I know, I say it every time, but we got to say it for new people. It's like having a laptop. With no internet access. Sure. You turn the laptop on, it works. Fuck yeah. Make some spreadsheets. Write an essay on Word. You know, uh, open up your Microsoft Office and do all sorts of stuff. But it's not really living up to the full capability, is it? Without the internet, come on. Your laptop is basically just a very expensive sort of... I don't even know what you call it. <laughs> Paperweight, really. It's a, that you can write stuff on, right? So I never even thought of it. It's even, how do you describe that? Right? It's a piece of garbage. In other words, it's not living up to its full potential. So Band helps your protocol. Bang! Live up to its full potential. So let's check out what Band's doing. Bringing up this full potential. So providing secure pricing for various crypto assets. So Coin98 Wallet aims at providing users with a simplified and multifunctional product project product Blech. that boosts security and usability for blockchain users such can be achieved through reliable price oracle data and a real-time settlement system which will ensure that all the digital assets will be managed in one place bang okay so by integrating band protocol into the coin 98 wallet the decentralized price oracle will ensure that reliable and secure pricing data is provided for over 14 foreign exchange rates and 125 crypto assets. So, sorry, excuse me. So, uh, it sounds like they're going to offer Forex pairs as well as, well, it says right here, 
125 crypto assets. So as a result, over 117,000 users will be, will, be will be provided with essential information concerning interactions with dApps, the transfer of tokens, and the management of overall assets. All right. Oops, sorry there. All right. So integrating Man Protocol will promote improved usability and security through its reliable price oracle data. The data will cover over 139 feeds for foreign exchanges and crypto tokens. The result is that the users of the Coin98 wallet will have adequate access to the transparent data they need. That's what it's all about, data, right? Like you see me trading. Yeah, well, why do I go to Forex Factory? That's where the data is. That allows me to make my trades and uh, kick a little ass, right? It's the data. When you've got reliable data, you know, uh, and so if you're new here, I'm a Forex trader. Yeah, I slaughter guys on Wall Street daily. That's like literally my job. <laughs> and well, the reason I can do it, there's a little website called Forex Factory. Well, not just because of them. I mean, I could find the data in other places, but this aggregates all the data. So it's a one stop shop called Forex Factory. So when U.S. interest rate numbers, European Union interest rate numbers or anyone's interest rate numbers. go, Yeah, I see it the exact same time that that guy on Wall Street does. If interest rate numbers are coming out at 930 a.m. for America, well, guess what? At 9.30 a.m., I'm on Forex Factory, and I see the exact same number that that, guy, that that guy sees, right? Whereas back in the days, Wall Street would get all the data, and us out here, we didn't know, right? So they would have an informational advantage over us, and then obviously slaughter us, right? <laughs> you know, trading is about information, right? It's not about your emotions or your heart or your feelings. It's about information, data. And so... Band is going to bring this data bang, to this Coin98 wallet. So let's see what else we're talking about right here. Over 139 feeds of for, for foreign exchanges. So that's my world. Foreign exchanges, uh, Turkish lira, Russian rubles, Mexican pesos, U.S. dollars, euros, uh, Japanese yen, blah, blah, blah. Foreign exchange and crypto tokens. So bang, that's what we need. Bye. The result is that the users of the Coin98 wallet will have adequate access to the transparent data they need. Transparent. And you got to have it timely data. Timely. The reason I can kill these guys on Wall Street is because I get the data the exact same time they do. So I have my, my, my trade in and I can see, say, I don't know, America lowers interest rates. All right, well, I short the dollar. Right? Uh... And I see it the same time they do. Whereas in the olden days, they would get to see it short the dollar. And then the next day or whatever, we, the regular people, would see that, right? But thanks to the internet, yes, we have timely data. And that's, what's allow that's what allows a regular guy like me to kick some guy's ass on Wall Street who's wearing a $2,000 suit. I get to kick his ass every day, right? <laughs> thanks to the internet. Look, look, America, thank you for the internet. Also, I'd have to be out where work. <laughs> Lock. Meanwhile, such data is also important for the Coin98 wallet development team to discover new product offerings and various use cases. Yours. So, hold on. Do we got to get in this nerd nerd shit? Hold on. We're not, we're not going to do that, all that. All right. We're not going to do all that nerd talk. Look, my band protocol hodlers. Bong. There you go. Band Protocol port partners with Coin98, and that one 98 wallet thing, that sounds hardcore. That's not just crypto crap. That's crypto and foreign exchange. All right. 139 foreign exchange feeds and the crypto token. So I've never heard of this Coin98 wallet thing before, but it's kind of interesting for a guy like me who trades who trades foreign exchange and who also owns crypto. That's kind of like a one-stop shop for me right there. <laughs> I should just get this thing and be like, yeah, yeah. you know, I've got all my, my revenue streams in one app here. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that, but all right. All right. Let's actually just read this, read it. Let's just read this thing right here. All right. Look, decentralized data for front end applications. 
Apart from smart contracts, other front-end applications make use of decentralized data. Uh, when such front-end applications make use of centralized sources for their price data, they become prone to risk. Oh, stop talking all this bullshit. That's why I didn't want to, I wanted want to get into the propaganda. That's a bunch of bullshit. All right, so we are going to skip it. All right, guys, but there you go. Bad hodlers. Bye. Yeah. Enjoy. All right. Bang. And then Iota. Project Peggy. Pagey. I'm going to call it Pagey. Um, uses Tangle to sell electricity, water, or gas. So look, look. So, and you know, that's what a lot of people are doing with Iota, right? They are just... You know, building stuff around the tangle, right? That we talked about it here. All those companies that are patenting things around the tangle. I talked about it to you before. You know, Microsoft and Fujitsu. This was back in 2018. Said they wanted to make it the st like a standard of Internet of Things devices. And then last year, uh, we read a couple companies came out. And they said the same thing. Like, yeah, we're patenting things around the tangle. Oh, this should be the standard. This should be the standard of Internet of Things, right? And, uh, well, you know, it just keeps going, right? Everyone's loving it. Like, you know, it's not IOTA bragging about themselves. It's other corporations. Fucking Microsoft, you know, bragging about the Tangle, right? Fujitsu bragging about the Tangle. SM Electronics. Microelectronics, the uh, number one chip maker in Europe, bragging about the Tangle, right? Like... When you hear other companies bragging about someone else's tech, well, fuck, you probably want to invest in that tech because everyone's excited, right? So you hear everyone bragging about the Tangle. Well, maybe you want to invest in the Tangle, fuck stick. All right? I mean, I don't tell anyone what to do with their money, but, you know, from my investment experience, when you've got industry adoption, well, usually that turns out well for the corporation, doesn't it? Usually generates what we call a little bit of revenue, doesn't it? <laughs> look, look, little revenue generation. And that's what we all about around these parts. All right, look, let's get to it. Uh, that's what your portfolio should be built with. Bang! Revenue generating crypto. You should have a, a big old cryptocurrency warehouse. Big. Bang! Strong. Bang! With revenue generating products. And look... In my opinion, Lyota is a revenue generator like a motherfucker. Just saying. So look, the project known as Espiota has been reinvented. As of October 28th, the project is called Pagey. Along with the change in its name, there's a new website to accompany it. Oh, it's a shiny little website. So the team behind Pagey has made an update on the solutions it introduces, which are built on Iota. Bang! Technology. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, other companies are building on IOTA, and that's what makes this Tangle thing amazing is that, you know, I told you yesterday, like, you know, they want to make it a standard, sort of like Bluetooth, right? And so Bluetooth is a standard, and then anyone can enable it. Well, sorry, sorry. Let me put it a different way. Anyone can put it into their devices, right? So if I'm a cell phone company, you know, mobile phone company, I can put it in my device. You know, Bluetooth-enabled phone, obviously. A laptop company, I can put it in my device. Or uh, I've got a Bluetooth speaker, actually. All right, I can put it in my device. And that's what they want to make IOTA like. That they want to make it so that it becomes like a Bluetooth. Like, you know, this product is IOTA-enabled. You know, so that you start thinking of it that way. Is this IOTA-enabled? Oh, yeah? All right, I'll buy it, right? Like that. Um, okay, so, and, and you know, all right, so I explained it. I mean, that's what's amazing, right? It's other companies saying that. Like, this thing is so good, we're going to build around it. So, what is Pagey? Let's look at Pagey. Pagey is a payment ecosystem to receive, negotiate, and issue refunds with any devices. This is one of the chance it changes that has implemented the project that was previously oriented to custom hardware development. 
The new approach allows use cases built on IOTA to be more versatile and meet the extensive, sorry, existing demand. So our first product is a firmware running on a variety of IoT devices like switches, sockets, plugs, relay boards, and valves. Wait, did we just read about this the other day? Anyways, uh, payment scheme for elect electrical. Did we read this? Hold on, let me look at something. This sounds very familiar. All right, all right. I guess we didn't read it. I guess I just read it, and I. <laughs> That's the problem. I read so many stories. Sometimes I wonder, like, did I already tell these guys? And so, actually, I have a little, a little spreadsheet, uh, not spreadsheet, um, a little Word document that I have that keeps track of what I've told you and what I didn't. All right. So, I guess I didn't tell you this. I just read it myself. So, look. All right. So, boards, valves to enable usage-based payment schemes for electrical devices or resources like electricity, water, and gas. And so, you know how IOTA is going to be in uh, the Land Rover is it Land Rover cars and the BMWs? Wait, wait, wait. I think BMW is uh, V-Chain. IOTA is going to be in Land Rover and Jaguar. Oh, and the Volkswagen. The Volkswagen cars. Right, right, right. Volkswagen. And, you know, they're going to have things where... Um, we read about it yesterday kind of a little bit, where they have that garage. You don't have to actually pay at the garage. Your car will just pay for you with IOTAs. So machine-to-machine -machine payments is what, so IoT devices, right? Paying each other stuff for stuff. All right, so look. Installation and configuration is straightforward and can be executed with little technological knowledge. Once installed, Pogi controls the connected device or resource with a single output signal. Pagey's product is designed to increase efficiency in commercial or private spaces. Users will be able to gain total control over the costs of any electrical device. Okay. IOTA co-founder Dominic Schiener celebrated uh, the introduction of Pagey to the IOTA ecosystem and published some use cases that can be applied with Pagey. Another great pro So this is what this guy says, Schiener. Another great project within the IOTA ecosystem. With Pagey, we build an ecosystem that enables any device to receive payments, to negotiate prices, to issue refunds, and to act as a mature ec economic operator. All right. All right, here are the applications. So the IOTA protocol allows Pagey products to use fee-less and permissionless microtransactions. That way, users can monetize even the smallest devices, even those that normally operate with less digitized currencies or payment myth methods that require more maintenance. Why do we consider distributed ledger technology superior over traditional payment providers like PayPal? Because first of all, their APIs are not designed to deal with small resource limited IoT devices. And that's the thing, right? Like uh, IOTA is going to, all these Internet of Things devices are actually going to sort of pay each other or something, right? And little micro payments, like super little micro payments. And actually, to tell you the truth, I haven't wrapped my full head around it yet. Like in a smart city, you know, um, there'll be like, say, carbon monoxide <clears throat> um, nodes around the city testing the air or something, right? And But you have to pay for their usage, right? You have to pay for that thing to test the air. and But in the Tangle, yeah, like the city would pay for it, you know? Like, I don't know, really. It's kind of... Not I don't know, but just, I mean, I don't know exactly who's going to do the paying of who, but people are going to, machines are going to pay machines, people are going to pay machines, and then the machines are going to report back what they find, right, kind of thing. So anyways, additionally, fees and commissions render them useless for many applications, and not to forget, using them require a bank account. And so that's the thing, like you don't need a bank account or anything, it just, it does it itself, right? These machines are going to do it amongst themselves. Um, all right. So among pagey applications, users will be able to enable the sale of resources, even in small quantities, 
such as electricity, water, or gas. For example, a company that rents electric bicycles will have a more effective way of charging its users. Another use case could be applied to in laundries and hotels, where it is estimated that there is a cost of up to 6% for the overuse of electronic devices. Making donations uh, will also have a revolutionary approach with Pagey. Uh, so, all right, so here's the donations part. Pagey enables donations of electricity, water, or gas to people or institutions in need like schools, hospitals, refugee camps, or individuals. This way, donations can reach the recipient directly while also being tied to a specific purpose. In April, the developer of the project, at the time called Espiota, Christian Oosting, gave an interview in, to Crypto News Flash. As an independent software developer, Oosting developed uh, the project with Felix Richard, operator of IOTA Shops. Uh, one of the aims of the project, which is still part of Pagey, is to enable even users with little technical knowledge to benefit from IOTA technology to apply it in multiple use cases. All right, so bang. But anyway, look. So here's another one. So these guys are going to use the Tangle to sell, well, it sells right here. Electricity, water, and gas. So like a utility company. And uh, we've read about um, IOTA before. Um, they have that water pump thing that uh, you pay per use. Um, let's get real. I'll say it this way. If you're rich, you can pay for whatever you want. If you're poor, you, you might not get access to these services so nicely. But that's the way it is, and that's the way it goes, and that's the way it be. Let's move on. Bye. Iota Society 2 launches Messenger Secrets in competition with Facebook. So, all right, let me get a sip. I don't know. I, I just found this right now, so I don't know what the fuck this even means. So let's read it and find out. As Crypto News Flash has already reported, Society2 is a decentralized social media platform based on the IOTA Tangle and aims to give users back the power over their data. All right. A few hours ago, the company announced the launch of the decentralized messenger Secrets. So this is some sort of messaging program like uh, uh, what's that shit called? WhatsApp or something like that. It's all encrypted and shit. So Secrets is a decentralized messenger app that sends encrypted messages via IOTA's Tangle. So it's unique in the sense that each participant creates a user, sorry, sorry, creates and uses an identity that is stored on their own device. Secrets, secrets can be used directly in an internet browser or installed as a progressive web application. Secrets is the first product of the platform that aims to grow step by step into a fully decentralized social media network. The technology used differs from centralized messengers such as Facebook in that the user has complete control over his data at all times and his digital identity is only stored on his personal device. So everyone knows it's really you. <laughs> Be afraid of those little uh, electronic IDs, people. I've said this before. Yeah, everyone's going to really know it's you. Gosh, little miscreants. Look, data sovereignty lies with user himself. The user himself. So this enables secure communications channels to be opened in which Society2 does not collect or store any data whatsoever, such as Facebook. In the past, many tech giants like Apple or Facebook were involved in numerous data scandals, so secrets can solve this problem in a decentralized way. Dominic Sheener, co-founder of IOTA, explains that consumer, consumers should think carefully about whether they continue to use mainstream online services that resell their data for profit. I don't care if you sell my data for profit. <laughs> Go for it, fuckstick. Ask yourself what you're willing to give up to share political posts and memes on Facebook. Are you willing to let Google follow you around, both online and off, for search results that are marginally better than its competitors? Do you know that item is cheaper on Amazon, or did you just 
give up uh, comparison shopping altogether. Informed consumers can and should be looking for alternative domains. All right. All right. All right, good. So we're in the end. All right. So Ben Roy, CEO of Society2, describes IOTA, that IOTA provides the perfect ground for a secure, decentralized future of social media. Secrets demonstrates a robust, private, secure, anonymous engine for powering the new decentralized social media future. IOTA serves as the trust negotiation layer for private and group chats. This is just the first step. Watch us as we extend our little engine to deliver a framework upon which an ecosystem of social media forums can blossom. So, genuine privacy, micropayments, true ownership of your social media content and identity, and an inversion of power where you choose the moderate standard for them. All right, fuck, fuck. All right, like that's enough. But, all right, but here's another thing. So, I had a whole alert. That's two, uh, two onboardings. You got the one here. Bong. You know, sell some electricity and stuff. And you got this little weird little thing right here. Whatever, man. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Bang, though, guys. I'm an IOTA hodler, but that doesn't impress me so much. All right, let's move on. Look, Hawk and Samurai, led by the sheep of the barn. Blockchain, Cyan. See you, sweetie. Love you, sweetie. Yes. Bang. Oh, and I found out, sweetie, yes. Because yesterday I was wondering, look. <clears throat> We were we were doing this thing we we're doing this thing called Circles UBI, so three of us were verified, myself, Stallion, and Edwin, and so last night people are telling me they're still not certified, and I'm like, what the fuck, what the fuck, who, who who's not helping? I know that I gave my 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 trust to everybody, obviously. I mean, I gave it to everybody, and I was like, it's obviously got to be Stallion or Edwin. Now, look, Stallion told me she gave everybody trust. So I pretty much knew it was Edwin. <laughs> and so Edwin last night showed the... Uh, <laughs> I love Edwin, though. Look, he's a little crazy, but you gotta love him. And he showed his screenshots. So I asked Stallion, send me screenshots of, of the people. Uh, and then Edwin sent me his screenshots. And I could see, yeah, he didn't trust anybody. So I'm like, brother... You know, you got to press that button there and that button there and then press bang and then bang. So he finally got it done. So I hope everyone's got it done. And they're now, uh, now that Edwin's done that, there should be more than enough for everyone to get their three and uh, their three trusts to be, to participate in the um, Circles UBI program. And so, you know, bye. All right. But now I get back to sweetie. Look, look, love you, sweetie. See you, sweetie. Bah. All right. I was like, who's not giving the trusts? She said, I gave everyone trust. I was like, fucking Edwin. <laughs> and it was true. It was Edwin. Look, look, smoking too much of that good, good, brother, after work. Settle down. Do some work first, then smoke the goods. All right, brother. Andrew Rajan, I love you for the seat of the bar. Baby, I'm Benjamin. Love you for the seat of the bar. Bitcoin car. <laughs> wow. Yes. Love you for the seat of the Bang! <laughs> DP Entertainment. <laughs> so, brother. Let me see, brother. Bang! Lorna. Oh, and she finally got her stuff. Finally, Lorna. Oh, my gosh. This girl here. I mean, she's only been around for about three, four months now. But daggone it. It's just that it, her crypto experience is a fucking hellscape. <laughs> it's a fucking hellscape. Fucking uh, Binance US held her, her held her money for like a month. She's trying to do the UBI and it's just not going down. It's like fuck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look, look, girl. Don't worry, girl. You're here with us with the crypto crew. We we got you. We got you. Let me go see you, girl. Bye. Don't worry. This market will treat you better. It will treat you better. Don't worry. And your your portfolio is looking. Nice and juicy, so don't worry about it. Bang! But seriously, I mean, I've never heard such... I mean, a couple of you guys have told me some things, but... Oh, wait. I mean, her thing has just been fiasco after fiasco after fiasco. Anyways, Kenneth Hines. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang! Yes. What do we got? Oh, Hollywood. Oh, yeah. James Bond. Yep. Yep. That's how it goes. 
Let's not go. Sean Connery. Sean Connery died. Look, I told you about James Bond movies already. I told you about a couple of months ago. I want you to watch a James Bond movie, okay? Forget the fancy suits. Forget the hot women, the nice cars, the fancy hotels, the fancy casinos, and all that five-star stuff. What I want you to do when you watch your next James Bond movie is I want you to look at the body count that James Bond accumulates over the course of the movie. <laughs> look at all the people he's killed. James Bond is the most murdering motherfucker yeah, in all of movies. Yeah, I know you're probably saying, well, what about John Wick? Come on, man. That's, that's some fantasy bullshit. That's nonsense. James Bond is the most murderous motherfucker ever. Yeah. But he does it in a suit and, and drinking his martini shaken, not stirred. And so it doesn't seem like he's gangster. That's the most gangster motherfucker out there. All right. So look. Well, first of all, let me tell Poppy what. Let everybody see with the bag. Yeah, guys. Sean Connery. Let everybody see with the bang. And, uh, Everyone out there, watch a James Bond movie. And don't look at all the fancy stuff. All the fancy pantsy and the woman and this. Yeah. Look at how he gets his gun off. Oh, yeah. Look at how much lead he puts in motherfuckers. <laughs> He's shedding lead like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. That's the truth. And here's a son of a bitch right here. Look, you son of a bitch. Look, look, bye. Look, look, bye. Look, look, bye. See, he's got his, see, he's got his James Bond. In homage to James Bond. Look, look, got you wrong, girls. No master. Love you, but see you the back. Oh. oh, and then back. Oh, yeah, and everybody go do that airdrop thing that we did. The Ocean X airdrop thing. I tweeted it. All right, what do we got here? What is this? 888 stars bet. Ah, you must be Asian. I know you Asians love the number eight. It's a lucky number, isn't it? In it starts bet is a hybrid gaming platform accepting 25 cryptocurrencies. I used to live in Chinatown, so I know about their their stuff <laughs> in Toronto. Yes. Spadina and Dundas. Bang, bang. That's right. Toronto hodlers. Bang. You know what I'm talking about. Spadina and College Avenue between Dundas and College. Straight Chinatown, homeboy. Oh, I used to know gangsters, Chinese gangsters. I'd go to their underground betting parlors. Oh, yeah. I'd be the only black person there with a whole bunch of Chinese guys. <laughs> yeah. And everyone would be looking at me, but they would see who I was with, so they would give me respect, you know. But a black person can't just walk up into some shit like that. All right, so look, though, but that's, that's another thing. So look, hey, hey token master, bang. Let everybody see with a bang. Oh, that's how it goes in Chinatown in Canada. Better know somebody before you just walk up into some place. Yeah, you might not make it out. <laughs> look, look, every hey, Dicko the Dicko family. Long time, but not long time, but it's been a while, brother. Let everybody see the family cryptos together, stay together. Bye. Let everybody see brother. Bye. Yes. Ditko. Love that guy. Oh, yeah. Look, look, there's crazy Edwin. Edwin, let everybody see brother. Bye. The original. Yeah, so you finally fucking figured it out. Exactly. Edwin, just press the, the star, not the star, the plus. When it comes up, just press trust. All right. Mission accomplished, brother. Mission accomplished, brother. <laughs> Finally. Holy. All right, let everybody see, brother. Bang. I made it a mission this weekend. I was like, fuck this. Fuck this. Everyone's going to get fucking on this UBI thing before the weekend's over. I'll tell you the truth. I was thinking, I was just, uh, I was, I'm going to, well, I'm, I'm not even thinking. I might do it. I have a couple other laptops here and I have another phone. Well, I have two phones, you know, one for business, one for my personal life. I might do the UBI thing on each of those devices. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. If we do, if you've got your phone, do the UBI on your phone in, an, in the app, right? And if you've got a laptop, which I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do, and so build it again, do another UBI, just make a new email address, new that. And so you have two personas or more 
collecting that UBI, guys, and we'll just keep fucking trusting each other and just keep building this massive horde of <laughs> of of UBI personas. All right, so think about it. I'm gonna probably do that. I did it on my laptop, but I have my other laptop, and then I have my crypto laptop. So that's two more UBIs I could do. And then I've got two phones here I could do. So yeah, by the end of this motherfucker, I could have five UBIs with different, you have to have different usernames though. You know, you have to have different usernames and emails, obviously. They're not going to just let you do that. Yeah, well, I'll just make them and go for it. I don't know what you're saying. Just putting it out there, brothers and sisters. Look. Binium. See, Binium is what, Binium? DeFi in the real world. What? Crypto lender Genesis issued 5.2 billion worth of new loans in Q3. Crypto lending and trading firm Genesis. Really? All right. That's not the regular Genesis. That's not that that Winkleboss kid shit, is it? That's some other shit. All right, I got to look into that. I, I didn't read that. Bye. I know you're going to love this. I know, I know. The Ripple story. I know. Everybody, everyone is laughing. <laughs> exactly. No. Oh, Paul went a whip and wubble. Paul little whip and wubble. Look. Ripple paid $9.3 million in XRP incentives to MoneyGram in Q3 2020. Look, guys, I told you about Ripple already. They're not making money. Ripple is losing money, and they use the 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 investments from the soccer moms and dads who own XRP to fund the operation. Let's get real to buy their lim their Lambos and their mansions and shit. Let's get fucking real. And so what they do is they do a lot of razzle dazzle. We're gonna donate to this and donate to that, and we're gonna be part of this board of directors of this and board of directors of that, to make it look like something's happening. But the bottom line is very simple: Are you making money? Look, look, Garling House, are you making money? The answer is. No, Ripple is losing money. And like I said, I mean, I've said this before, right? They're paying MoneyGram to use it. Yeah, it's what's called an inducement. Do you know what an inducement is? Little worker bee, do you know what a fucking inducement? In my world, oh, I'm going to show you fucks that. Look, look, let me show you about welcome to the real world, boys and girls, little worker bees. Let me show you a little something. Let me show you what Ripple is doing. It's called an inducement. What is an inducement? An inducement is a thing that persuades or influences someone to do something. Yet they are paying money, Graham, to use it, you morons. Look, uh, if you're a Ripple holder, an XRP holder, are you fucking stupid? Look. If the, if the technology, uh, and the, here it is a year, or uh, what, what, this is what I like to use, a bribe, a bribe. If you are an XRP hodler, well, if I'm an XRP hodler, the company should be paying XR, should be paying Ripple to use the XRP, right? If XRP is saving so much money and it's so fast and it's so good, well, MoneyGram pays XRP to use it, right? Walmart pays VeChain to use those VeChains to trace all that shit, all that food, all right? Oh, let's even go here. Let's even go here. Let, let's start from the beginning. Bah! All right, all right, okay. Huh. Th this Swiss town is paying Tezos to use that shit. Tezos doesn't pay them. Ben is being paid by Coin98 Wallet to be used. Because their tech is so good, I pay you. Yeah, well, this is a little different, isn't it? Bah! Wait, wait, where's the bang? Bah! Hold on, even let's bang it. Let's fucking open it right up. Let's open this motherfucker right up and get right into it. Fuck this. It's Saturday night. You know how we do around these parts. Oh, and I'm fueled. I'm ready to get into some ripple ass right here. <laughs> oh, Paul, where the whip and wobble. Look, look, ripple lovers. Ripple is... Paying XRPs to MoneyGram. Yeah, well, if money, if, if XRP is such a good program, uh, the ODL thing and all that, well, MoneyGram should be paying XRP. 
if you're a mechanic and I fix my, uh, if I'm a mechanic and I fix your car, you pay me, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I did the work. Right? 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 You want to go more? Let's go chain link. But chain link doesn't pay those people to use those off chain data. No, they pay chain link. Why is Ripple paying? Hello, XRP hodlers. Hello. Duh. Duh. Oh. Oh, man, a whip a wobble. You didn't go to school. You don't have any brains. You don't know how business works. Business works in I have a service. I provide it to you. You pay me. I don't pay you to use my service. But what's happening here? Ripple is paying MoneyGram to use it so that basically they can use MoneyGram as an advertisement to pretend that, look, look, we've got MoneyGram. Look, look, Ripple lovers. Let me tell you something, XRP hodlers. XRP, they were supposed to be the swift killer, the whole big banking thing. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yeah. Liquidity for the money, for the banks and all that. We're going to get rid of the Tezo, uh, sorry, the uh, Novos and Volstro accounts and blah, blah, blah. That didn't work. That didn't work. And so now Ripple's like, yes, we're going to be the biggest remittance thing. Well, the biggest remittance thing in the world is called Western Union. Well, Western Union did a six-month tenth, a six-month test of XRP and said, what? What did the CEO of Western Union say? It costs us seven times more money to move our money around with this fucking XRP crap than it does just to do what we do normally. Look, look, Ripple lovers. Oh, poor little whip. Until Ripple actually makes money, you're an invested in a failing company. And Garlinghouse, Schwartz, Larson, all the top guys, well, they're fine. They're taking your money that you've got invested in their thing, and they're buying themselves beautiful homes, beautiful yachts, beautiful cars, having a good old time. They show up at a little event once a day, uh, once every once in a while, say blah, 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 the usual bullshit, and, and they're just fucking over your money, just using your money to pay themselves. Grow up. All right. That's it. That's it. I know. I know, Benjamin. <laughs> you dig on right. I loved it, Benjamin. Look, look. Bah. Because it's the truth. If you are an XRP hodler, you're a moron. You're a moron. Yeah, does it make money? Yeah, where's the banking stuff they said they were going to do? Where's that remittance shit that they said? They're moving less than $4 million a day in remittance. Come on, grow up. You think that's going to make you money? You think when these analysts get here, you think when smart money gets here, they're going to appreciate that? They're going to look at that and say, oh, uh, this is something to get into? Absolutely not. And remember, I was a Ripple hodler. I had $12,000 in Ripple. Yeah, but then you know, my brain woke up and <laughs> look. I had to get some V-chain with that. So look. All right, enough of that. Ripple lovers. Poor little whipple lovers. Wake up. All right. CB News. What, Benim? CB News. Also during this week, China launched a new computer and search engine made in China. What? A new computer and search engine? Wow. Well, about the search engine, but I know that this thing you're showing me right here. Whoops. Sorry. Yeah, Huawei. Huawei came out with the new... Uh, the phones that are going to be already ready for the digital yuan. What are you talking about? Search engine, brother. <laughs> Got a little crazy. Smoking that good, good, brother. But yeah, Huawei's coming out with a new phone, and it's going to be ready for the digital yuan. China's coming fast and furious, and they are not fucking around. And so is their industries. And yeah, you know, that's why everybody's got to Everyone's got to jump on board, and that's what's such a good thing for us. So, bye. There's Ditko, Ditko, Ditko. Look, look, Kong. Get your fuel and watch the greatest show in the multiverse. Look, look, bang. Dang, I'm right. Watch it. Bang. Because I talked about Tezos. Bang. I talked about Ben. Bang. Talked about Iota. Bang. And another Iota. Bang. Oh, it goes, brothers. All right, that's everybody. That's everybody. That's all you miscreants. Is it? Oh, piggy wiggy. All right, all right. <laughs> look, look at the chicken fatty. Look, look. Piggy wiggy. Why, why, why are we doing all this? There we go. 
You know, I love me some piggy. Let's get some weekend piggy, everybody. Boo! <laughs> Tezos used for the Swiss town for COVID. Boom! Ban protocol on boards 98. Wallet. Boo! Ban uh, uh, something that is going to use IOTA for the gas and the sales. Boom! And then Society 2 launches the shit for the secrets of uh, on IOTA. Boom! Yes, yes, piggy we eat. That's how you do it. And Shamari drops the chicken. Boom! Oh, yeah. Dropping that chicken. Dropping that chicken on a piggy wiggy. Oh, oh, yeah. All right, enough, enough. Tag on that piggy wiggy. <laughs> oh, there's Lorna. Yeah, so Lorna, fuck, finally. Did we already talk about Lorna? I feel like we did, but maybe just in case. I'm glad you got the thing finally. Bah! All right. DBI. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Let's get back to the Death Star. Bah! Yes. Welcome back. All right, yeah, so, you know, as usual, you know, we had a great show for you today. Oh, I do. You know how we be. You know how we get down around these parts. <laughs> Greatest in the multiverse, I mean. Yes, you know. That's how it goes, you know, so. <laughs> that's so arrogant. All right, guys, look. Story number one, Tezos to be used by the Swift Town for COVID. So, that Swiss Town using it for COVID is great. But it's beyond that. That's a government contract. And, uh, you know, uh, I know, I know. Shmore, man, you're always talking about government contracts. Yeah, because they never end, motherfucker. Government employees are a bunch of... All right, let me say it in a nice way. I was going to be rude. My dad was a government employee, so I don't want to say... <laughs> so he was an accountant for the government of Ontario, Canada. All right, but... um. Government employees, <clears throat> they just take orders from above. They don't want to change anything. If something's working, they're not going to fuck with it. You know, like they don't want to get in trouble and end up with an office beside the, the, the storage room and all this kind of stuff. And so they never do anything. <laughs> they just don't do anything unless it's fucking up so bad you have to. Yeah, once you have a government contract, baby, I mean. You are good to go. And that's why I told you earlier in the week, the IOTA contracts, like IOTA is just getting government after government after government, not to mention all those corporations that are patenting around it, not to mention Microsoft, the Fujitsu and SM Micro saying we, this should be the standard of IOT devices. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, all right. So that's, we'll get to that bragging shit with the IOTA part, but for Tesla's hodlers, yeah, well, there's a government contract. And as long as this works out, oh, what's to say that that little town doesn't say, hey, what else can you do for us, motherfucker? So, <laughs> bah, once you get your foot in the door oh, and you deliver and you deliver the goods, you got to deliver the goods or else. Uh, but as long as they deliver the goods, bang, tells those hodlers, that looks like a... Access to uh, government contracts in Europe. Bang! All right, let's move on. And then ban protocol onboards Coin98 wallet. So that Coin98, I mean, you know, it's the ban protocol. So the same thing that Chainlink does. Going to get off-chain data, off-chain price data um, on-chain. And then let, let uh, I don't know, the Coin wallet do whatever it wants with it. And then, uh, but what I like about the Coin wallet is, dang on, that was a pretty robust wallet. They had like... Uh, Right, some forex stuff. It sounded like, and so some foreign exchange uh, derivatives talking. So that was kind of interesting. Oh, wow, what's my cigarette? And so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, just great for band holders. Great for internet. Uh, sorry, crypto. Great for the multiverse. All right. And then Project Pagi is going to use the Tangle to sell electricity, water, and gas sales. And so I told you this machine to machine shit. And, uh, you know, um, that's what's coming in the future. Like you notice the IOTA stories I talked to you about. It's all, it's all smart city stuff, right? And so this. I mean, they're going to start it now, but, you know, this is kind of smart city stuff, right? Like, 
you're going to plug in your, you're going to go to a car, uh, sorry, you're going to go to work, plug in your car electrically, hopefully, eventually, and yeah, the IOTA, you, your car will just automatically pay with IOTAs. Um, the gas sales, we talked about the gas thing, well, a gas-like thing like this, in that, okay, you can, you can generate, you know, you can put solar panels on your house. Boop, 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 get all the energy you need. Like I told you about the, the Elon Musk thing, Solar City, And then you have batteries on the side of your house that actually store the energy for you. But if you have more energy than you need, you can sell it back to the grid. So you actually generate revenue by solarizing your house. And so that's the kind of stuff uh, that this is about. I'm not sure how this water part works, but <laughs> look, that's what it says. So bang. All right, let's move on. And then finally, IOTA Society 2 launches secrets to compete with Facebook. So, uh, it just it just sounds like a fucking WhatsApp. You know, it just sounds like a WhatsApp to me. Uh, uh, encrypted messages to each other. Um, I don't know. We'll see how that Society 2 thing works out. But whatever. You're again. You're you're already copying something that's already there right and that's what i told you about when i invest in this space i invest in this space in that i don't want to invest in stuff that's already copying something that's there right i used to own a lot of tron lots of tron fuck i think it was like 20, 10 g's worth yeah but he's just copying shit that's there right i mean it's gonna work for him oh yeah, he's gonna get rich and a couple of his you know tron lovers will probably get rich a little bit but that ain't fuck all. That ain't fuck all, right? It's already shit that's there. In other words, he literally, and, and another thing, he literally just ripped off Chainlink. He's calling something I think called Sunlink. Holy, what a what a scammer. Well, I always protect him. I, I, I don't think he's a scammer, but just, because it, it's real what he's doing, but he's doing it in a sneaky, nasty way, and uh, that ain't gonna work and so well, not when institutional money gets you that ain't gonna work so um and so that's why I, like, so why i'm talking about that is the iota society to launch secrets which is just basically a whatsapp thing so again you're just copying something that's already there and so we'll see anyways so look we got tezos bye we got banned Bang! And two iotas, bang! Let's send you home. Shill it, kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Subscribe below, press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth, greatest show. Yeah. Yeah. In the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamar Clark. Love talking money. Bang! Love talking crypto. Bang! It's a favorite time of my day. So, thanks for having me in your home. And I will see you guys on Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday election day. Yeah, so we're going to be here early because we're going to be watching that hard. Holy fuck, that shit. That shit looks hardcore. It looks tight. looks tight. looks close. <laughs> so that's the shit. That's the shit. That's the most powerful country in the world having their elections for not only their president, but their Congress. And so bang, bang on Tuesday. You best be awake, live, and ready to rock. Locked, cocked, and ready to rock. So I'll see you Tuesday before that, and uh, we'll do that. So until then. Subscribe below, press the bell, you get an automatic notification. Watch that video here. Bang! It's the greatest in the multiverse. And look, look. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. Spend it with loved ones and family and friends. Have a great time. And I will see you guys on, on Election Day, America. Bang! My name is Shamar Clark. Always watching the money. Yes. Always on duty. Yes. Over and out.